Now, most historians research their subject matter from the calm of a warm library, but there was no such chance of an obvious approach from my next guest. He's a former member of Monty Python, whose talent for comedy and love, let's face it, of dressing up, resulted in a rather more hands-on treatment of history in the BBC's new series called The Crusades. Will you welcome the marvellous Terry Jones. Well, I don't know, you're always dressing up in something. In this, this case, it was the chain mail. So that was all right, actually. Well, it was quite uncomfortable, I have to say. The chain mail didn't quite fit. It was meant to make, be made to measure, but it didn't. But, and it's made to weigh about two stone, but it's not too bad, actually, when it fits. But when it's pinching your shoulders, you can imagine. It's pretty Shoulder nasty. pads, that's the answer. I should be, yeah, I should have that. Was that supposed to be your war horse you were buying? No, no, that was just a little uh, baggage trade mule. That to was, eat uh, on the way, perhaps. Abs well, maybe. <laughs> they did a lot of eating, actually. Agree, so. They did. They used to sort of eat the horses en route if they had to, didn't well, they? Well, yes, I think, really. They, one, at one stage, they actually ate the uh, inhabitants of a town. They got, uh, they got, when they got really hungry, that was a radical cookery at that point. Now, what's your fascination, therefore, with such a period of history? Well, I, what it was with the Crusades, I think there were, there were two things, really. One is that I had Stephen Runciman's three volumes of the Crusades sitting on my shelf, and I hadn't read it. It's been sitting there since 1964, and I'd read about 20 pages of it, and I thought, well, if I don't do this series on the Crusades, I'll never read those three books. And the other thing was the, when Alan Arira, the producer, said that we were going to look at it and try and tell the story of the Crusades, not only from the Christian point of view, but also from the Islamic point of view. And that was, uh, I thought that could be really interesting. So was it the Pope then who really triggered off the Crusades originally? I think you could blame the Pope, yes. I, what actually happened was the Emperor of Byzantium um, asked for a bit of help against, against the Turks, who were sort of uh, making incursions on his, uh, his empire at the time. And uh, I think the emperor kind of thought, well, he'd get about, you know, a couple of thousand mercenaries or something. But the uh, pope, for some extraordinary reason, suddenly declared this crusade. I mean, he suddenly said, look, if you'll go out and uh, fight against the Turks, you'll get salvation. And this was a, a totally radical thing. I mean, Christianity up to then had been a Pacific religion. Um, you know, the, thou shalt not kill is one of the commandments, and it meant thou shalt not kill. If you killed people in battle, it was a sin. Um, after the Battle of Hastings, for example, the victorious Normans had to do 40 days penance for the uh, people they'd killed. But here's the Pope suddenly saying, well, of course, it is a sin to kill another human being, except there are some human beings who, if you kill them, it's not only not a sin, it's actually an act of penance. This is war as an act of penance. It's an extraordinary idea. Totally bizarre. And you also have a theory that there are similarities between the Crusades and Python. Now, that's very far stretched. <laughs> well, this was not a theory, actually. No, it, was, it was just as we, as we went along sort of doing the research, I became increasingly aware how a lot of the Crusade chroniclers and historians had clearly plagiarised Python, some of the Python shows. Um, <laughs> I mean, there was one example was uh, in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. We had a scene in which King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table attacked this castle, with their, and they haven't got any siege equipment, any ladders or siege engines. So they attack the walls of the castle with their bare hands and swords, hitting the walls like that. And the defendants all gather up on the battlements and jeer and throw dead animals down them. Now, this actually happened. In the First Crusade, the Crusaders arrived outside the walls of Jerusalem, and they didn't have any siege engines or ladders or anything. So, uh, but a hermit who was with them said, if they attack anyway, God will give them the victory. So they attacked anyway, I suppose, hoping the walls would fall down. So they start hitting the walls with their swords and hands and uh, hoping they'd fall down. And the Muslims all gathered on the parapets and jeered and threw dead animals on them. I mean, it was a total pinch from Python. Absolutely. I mean, now, the thing is that, really. the, that Python actually <laughs> celebrated, what, 25 years last year? It did, yeah. And they're being rerun on, on BBC Two. Yeah. We want to see a clip, and I'm afraid, once again, you're in the gear. I think you're without the shoulder pads in this oh, case, really? too. <laughs> 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 That's brilliant. So when, when you see the reruns... A bit I hadn't <laughs> seen for a long time, I have to tell you, Gloria. <laughs> what kind of memories come flooding back, though, when you look at clips look like at that? that? Well, it's usually sort of agonies of things that went wrong or things that didn't work when we were doing them. It's just not so bad now, 25 years later. It uh, seems quite a lot. I mean, I'd, I'd totally forgotten that sketch, I have to say. So what went wrong, for example? Because I know that actually comedy is a pretty serious business. But well, there's always things going wrong. I mean, the thing with comedy, it's a bit like poetry, I always think. Everything has to work. You know, the, uh, the, the costume has to be right, the camera angle has to be right. I mean, everything's got... And if something doesn't work, 
Um, it, you can lose a joke, and it's, I mean, it's always happening. You see, things that read funny on the page don't, aren't funny when you actually do them, or you know, hardly ever vice versa. I noticed in America they're still running almost daily. So yeah. clearly, worldwide, they still have an enormous appeal. Yes, it's, a, it's an odd thing. Though. I mean, it's always been, I, it been bigger in the States since it started going out in the States. I suppose because it, it, it does go out all the time, and they've got, they've got no shame about repeating things. You know, <laughs> whereas in England, you know, they, they were shown once, then one repeat, and then they haven't been seen again since until this, this last year, really. Do you think the comedy really stands out? Yeah, I think with some of the, uh, some of the jokes we wouldn't do now, there's some rather sort of uh, slightly homophobic gay jokes that <laughs> I don't think we'd do, or these sort of camp, limp-wristed limp camp jokes, which I'm sure we wouldn't do now if we were, if we were doing things like that. But, but what are some uh, of the bizarre situations, you know, yeah. when you analyse it, that you find yourselves in? You know, maybe saying, how did we ever get around to doing a sketch <laughs> about this? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, uh, there were things like, I suppose, the... Um, the, the blamange from the planet, from the uh, galaxy of Andromeda that uh, was wanting to uh, um, turn everybody into Scotsmen so that it could win Wimbledon on the grounds that <laughs> no Scotsman's ever won Wimbledon, <laughs> that's right. Um, but, I mean, generally, I mean, the, the whole thing worked on being bizarre. I think it was more, uh, often it was more like, um, uh, it was so amazing how you'd be doing things and they'd suddenly turn into reality. I mean, there was one, we had this uh, thing about a, a live broadcast from the planet Algon and uh, it segued into the moon landing. I mean, and that was for real. And people watching at home, I know, said, you couldn't quite tell when Python ended and the real thing <laughs> happened, started. But clearly you're looking forward to the whole series of the Crusades. So I hope it goes very well indeed on television. And thank you very much indeed for joining us. Ladies right. and gentlemen, Terry Jones.